necklaces and wreaths for lovers of folk costumes and modern fashionistas, a master who livens up traditional Ukrainian jewelry and takes them to a new context. How are these accessories made and how do they differ from any other? UATV spent the day with this amazing woman, who wants to show her passion for Ukrainian culture to the whole world. The traditional Ukrainian embroidered shirt is today perhaps the most famous Ukrainian garment outside the country. Modern designers have even added dresses with patterns, so the choice is greater than ever. But real Ukrainian villager who lived a couple of hundred years ago would be extremely surprised why all these people from the future wear only one element of the folk costume, and that one that was not usually shown to the public. The embroidered shirt is in fact part of the underwear. It is obvious that it is simply convenient to combine it with other, more modern things. But why have all the other elements of the national costume been forgotten? In Ukraine this is called stroy, a collection of garments with accessories. They differed from region to region, even from village to village. The aim of the costume was to show the achievements of local craftsmen. For example, when we talk about jewelry in fine embroidery or blacksmithing. There is one thing common to a Ukrainian stroy. They always contain vivid, memorable images, especially the female ones. In the 21st century, national costumes look like works of art, although admittedly, it's inappropriate and impractical to use them in everyday life. But a master who devoted all her creativity to an integral part of the Ukrainian national costume believes this does not mean that the past achievements of folk designers cannot be part of modern culture. We're engaged in jewelry and they're perfect in our country. We're engaged in the reconstruction of old hats, in particular wreaths, as well as necklaces. Also, we make designer things. Olha Troyan doesn't just collect jewelry, similar to those that were in trend once. She tries to show that ancient necklaces and wreaths have a place in today's women's dresses. The master has understood that for this she needs to present her work properly. It is very important for me to take a photo of what I did on a beautiful background, with certain things and always on a girl. It's very important for me to show people how a necklace looks on the neck, and sometimes it looks quite different than just lying on a table. Up next on our program, how did a girl from a modern industrial region get involved in vintage jewelry? What secrets do necklaces and wreaths hold about Ukrainian women? How much of what Olha Troyan does is demanded by today's fashionistas. This is a master of many talents, and UATV is pleased to show them to the world right now. Olha Troyan was born near Mariupol, which is the largest industrial center and port in southeast Ukraine. My parents are a wonderful Ukrainian-speaking family. Mom is from Cherkasy region and dad from Azovsi littoral area. But his relatives came from Poltava region, so I have a clear vision of Ukraine and Ukrainian culture. Every girl dreams of trying on her mother's jewelry, especially rich Ukrainian necklaces. She grew up and went to study in Kyiv to be a biologist. It was in the capital, where young people from all over the country are concentrated, that she really got to learn about the multifaceted side of Ukrainian culture. When I studied, I found myself in such an ethnic environment. Folklorists, cultural scientists, ethnographers, the Ivan Honchar Museum, Roxolana Club. We performed in such places dressed in traditional clothing. My love of jewelry appeared again as we began to look for what to wear. They visited various antique markets and found the necessary items of clothing or jewelry. The only problem was that the student's scholarship was too small to cover all this beauty. They did not have enough time to make something by hand. A swine flu epidemic hit Ukraine in 2009, and universities announced a quarantine. I went home. It was winter. There was nothing to do in the village. Just sit at home most of the time. I went to Mariupol and bought some wool in a handicraft shop. These were my first beads, which began to order. 
мене це так захопило, я почала, тобто це були мої перші такі на міста, які почали замовляти. Olha's first clients were her acquaintances from the young music group Daha Braha, now one of the most famous Ukrainian projects abroad. Since that time, the master began making reconstructions of old jewelry or interprets them in her own style. And it turns out that people are very interested. The trend for the ethnic style in clothing and jewelry is only gaining popularity. Olha Troyan will show, especially for UA TV, what kind of necklaces and wreaths she makes today, why not authentic materials are even welcomed, and how all of this is made. The necklace is one of the main pieces of prehistoric jewelry. People wore them long before they learned agriculture. Such snail shell beads were created 110,000 years ago. But most likely not only as an icon of style. Necklaces were considered above all else as a protective amulet throughout human history and in different cultures. The Christian custom of wearing a cross only continued those ancient traditions. For Ukrainian women, jewelry on the neck was a piece of armor. The necklace protects the female soul from the evil eye, from bad words, and it absorbs all the negative energy for itself. And when a necklace snaps and breaks, it is believed that it was oversaturated with everything that it had taken in. Sometimes a necklace was even dug into the ground, so as everything would come out of it. A woman's necklace also demonstrated the level of wealth of the family which the woman came from. The most valuable materials were corals, Murano glass from Venice and amber. You could understand a lot about the social status of the hostess. Of course, someone wanted to exaggerate their status. But over time, even fakes have become authentic. There were lots of people who made copies, but by the way, there are very cool imitations of coral, which are not very expensive too. Just like copies of amber, which are also very expensive, sometimes on a par with an original. Olha either reconstructs necklaces using old photographs or makes her own versions. The initial materials can be both authentic and modern, when it is her own work. I mostly do what I want, so I don't really like to take purchase orders. I create what I want and let it go, if I want it to, for sale. But if I see that a person is interesting, he has an interesting suggestion, an interesting idea, we create jewelry for this person. It all starts with the composition. The future necklace must first be laid out on a surface. Olha says it is almost impossible to string elements on a thread and immediately get a good decoration. For me this is art, to put all of this together. I understand that for someone else this is just a necklace. For me this is my life. I need to see the whole picture in order to lay the beads in the right order and count up the number of rows. I really don't like symmetry, but beads need it. So I lay them out, I measure everything for each bead, and then just string the necklace. In the village, masters strung the beads on the strongest thread they could find in their houses, usually silk or wool, but sometimes even horse hair. Today Olha uses a jewelry cable or a Kevlar thread, which is used to sew body armor. My stringing system is my personal system, because I almost always manage to string the necklace on one thread. That is, this is such a method. Here it is tied, it goes next, here it is tied in a certain way, then it returns again, it comes back again, and in the end I tied it with special strings, at the end of which I make brushes. I borrowed this idea from Hutsul hats. If Olha doesn't like something during stringing, some elements seemed superfluous or she wants to add another one, then she then as a rule holds work on the necklace right away at this stage. Sometimes the master makes a deliberate mistake. For example, a coral necklace has such a beautiful red coral color, and a black bead is inserted somewhere there, like hello, it's simply inserted there, so that the necklace is not so perfect and that it offers better protection. This is the amulet to protect a woman from the evil eye.
in most cases, Olha manages to make one necklace every two or three days, despite the fact that she works evenings and nights. If there are many small elements, it can take her an entire week. There is even more complexity and manual work involved in producing wreaths, especially if it's a reconstruction. Olha shows the headpiece for a lady, which bridesmaids in Ivana from Kiev's region can still wear. An old blown glass was bought. These beads are very light and very beautiful. There is no such material now. There are glass beads, but they are heavy. If they are used and so many beads are inserted, the wreath will be very heavy and it won't be worn. These flowers are made out of aluminum foil, also quite approximately, as was so in ancient times. This wreath is also interesting because there is such a metallic material. It's very often inserted into the wreaths of this region. I couldn't find any, so used lurex instead. After the decorations are ready, Olha arranges a photo shoot. This time, she reconstructs the wedding image of a member of the Ukrainian petty bourgeois, who was fascinated by the French fashion for orange blossom wreaths, citrus tree flowers. At first, they were worn by petty bourgeois women, that is, by noble women at balls and weddings. And then the village women and girls saw it and began to make flowers from wax. And in the end, it turned into an incredibly hip tradition to make these wreaths out of wax. This is my attempt to recreate orange blossom. Here the flowers are made of clay, the necklace is from modern pearl, and it's a vintage dress. Dress. I reckon the dress is from my grandmother's day, my great-grandmother's era at most. Olha Trojan's jewels can be seen at modern weddings, they become props for TV projects and are sent to different parts of the world by connoisseurs from the Ukrainian diaspora. And not only. The master has created wreaths and necklaces for the source's ethnic project within the auspices of Ukrainian Fashion Week, and they complement her on-stage image. But despite being busy, she has not stopped singing. She recently joined the Zimosis music project to release an album of Ukrainian folk lullabies and her own stylization for them in an electronic music style.
For me, traditions, or the continuation of traditions, are the creation of something else. Culture and traditions never stand still. Nikoli, culture and traditions never stand still.